and welcome to yet another screencast. This one is for the Scheme Figneous Rock Identification, which we already know is on page 6 in the Earth Science Reference Table. I know you kids like to hang out at parties and read this chart, but I figured I'd share my insights on it, so let's get started with it. First things first, I'm a realist. What a great idea for a song. I'll remember that later on. All right. Anyway, going on. Hey! Do you want to learn about reading the scheme for igneous rock identification chart in the Earth Science Reference Table? I probably should have animated him a little bit, moved him back and forth, like pretend like he was talking. Too late for that. Next time, that would be out of this world. I don't know why I chose that voice for him, but I just did. Yeah, yeah, they're both excited about it, and of course, we all know what the horsey says. Not again. Again, just to repeat, these are the only two characters that are available in Mimeo. Try to make sense out of that. So I'm just going to get my red pen to make some marks, perhaps, perhaps not. If you look at this, it's a pretty brilliant and genius organization of information. So igneous rocks can be broken down into two categories based upon their environment of formation, right over here, right, environment of formation. And they could either be intrusive, right, which is stuff like hot liquid magma, or extrusive stuff like lava. So those are the two basic ways in which we classify igneous rocks and it's based upon where they formed. So as I move down the left hand column over here I go from extrusive rocks and then this dividing line gives me intrusive rocks. You can see that there is a rock called diabase that falls in the middle somewhere. Some forms of diabase can be extrusive, some could be intrusive, and I will show you pictures of that later on. So stay tuned, how exciting. Um, we can also describe them based upon texture. You will be identifying rocks um, based upon texture, if they're glassy or fine, coarse or very coarse, um, and that would give you an idea of the method of formation, whether they are intrusive, if they have a coarse texture or very coarse, or they're extrusive, if they're glassy, you know that certainly is extrusive. On this side of the chart, which would be student left, by the way, they tend to be lighter, lower in density, something called felsic, which we'll talk about more in class, so that obligates you to still come to class, and they are rich in SI and AL. SI is silicone, or some people would say silicon, and aluminum, or some people would say aluminum. On this side of the chart, they are darker in color, they're higher in density, and there's something called mafic, which they are rich in. Fe, which is iron, after ferrous, and then magnesium, right? So those are the elements that would make it mafic, which we'll talk more about that. And then this brilliant thing over here gives you an idea of the composition. So anything here would contain potassium feldspar, quartz, plagioclase feldspar, biotite, and amphibole. So these rocks here, and they have varying percentages of them. We'll show you how to measure that in class as well. Um, and then the rocks in the middle are somewhere in between in terms of color, density, and composition. Again, examples to follow, which is very exciting. But let's take a walk. Maybe I'll use green, be innovative and use green. We're going to take a walk first across this way. We're going to go from vesicular rhyolite to vesicular andesite to vesicular basalt. And what we should see is the color getting lighter to darker. Okay, All of them are going to be vesicular, and I wonder if that's a wordly wise word. Can somebody please let me know if that's wordly wise or not? That would be very nifty of you. That means it has gas pockets, so let's take a look at that. Here you can see vesicular rhyolite. Notice that, um, where are we? Hey, here we are. Vesicular rhyolite, in terms of color, tends to be on the lighter side, which it is. You can see the little air pockets or gas pockets, which would make it, get this out of the way, vesicular, yay. My next rock is going to be vesicular andesite. You can see those gas pockets are there. All right, and that happens because this forms from lava. It's an extrusive rock, and it cools so quickly that the gases that are in there don't get a chance to escape, and that leaves you with those gas pockets or the vesicular nature of that rock. How exciting to say vesicular nature. You can see it's a little bit darker than the vesicular rhyolite, so we're getting darker in color because we're moving from the left-hand side to the right-hand side, student left, by the way, to the student right side. Um, and then if we look at vesicular basalt, you can see it's significantly darker. Right? There's vesicular basalt, 
but uh, it's vesicular as well, sorry, and it's extrusive, but it's certainly on the darker side of the chart. Again, pretty brilliant organization of information. At least I like to think so. But then again, I lead a pretty boring life. Now we're going to take a stroll up the column. We're going to start at pegmatite, and we're going to work our way up to obsidian, which you've all seen before, believe it or not. Uh, pegmatite, you can see it's an intrusive rock. Another word for that is plutonic, which we'll talk about in class as well. Um, it has very coarse grains. So if you were to look at this in person, you would see that they're very coarse material, and you can actually see a picture of a close-up of pegmatite. You see the grains are very, very large. Here they're saying 10 millimeters or larger. It's uh, considered very coarse. It would be lighter in color, which it is. It would be lower density compared to a rock on the other side, and it would be felsic in nature. We'll keep moving on. Granite, which many of you might have on your countertops, right? Um, you can see that granite is, is um, the, the crystal size is smaller, not as large as pegmatite. However, it's still an intrusive rock. It's still considered plutonic, and it's considered coarse-grained rather than very coarse. We're going to continue our journey with some granite close-up pictures. Again, you can see the grains here are much larger. Right, those are grains. These are all grains over here. You can visually see the grains with your eyes, which automatically tells you that you have an intrusive igneous rock. And then here we go to rhyolite. So you can see the jump from granite close up to rhyolite. You can no longer see the grains. It's actually considered fine grain texture and therefore is an extrusive igneous rock. Hoping you're enjoying this as much as I am because this is thrilling. Then we have vesicular rhyolite. Um, I, yeah, vesicular rhyolite, sorry, which we already saw before. It's nice to see it again, right? It's kind of like seeing a friend. Yeah. Um, and we're going to continue our way up. Again, vesicular, gas pockets, worldly wise perhaps? I don't know. You tell me. And then we have pumice, which you probably heard of pumice stones before people use to exfoliate their skin. Again, still vesicular, still has glass pockets. And then everybody's favorite, obsidian. And this is what they used to make arrowheads out of. Primitive uh, civilizations used to make arrowheads out of. Maybe even your first knives came from obsidian. And even though it's on this side of the chart that it's supposed to be lighter in color, you can see in parentheses, they say it usually appears black. Okay, every sample of obsidian I've ever witnessed has been black. I'm looking forward to the day when it's not. It'll be quite thrilling as well. Not as thrilling as this or other stuff. or Not as thrilling as Penbrella, because Penbrella is pretty much the most thrilling thing in the world. And here we go, the vesicular andesite. So you probably thought I was going to start a diorite again. A little curveball, and now we're going to head on our way down, and you can see that the vesicular andesite is darker than vesicular rhyolite. However, they still have, uh, they're still vesicular, still have gas pockets. And then regular andesite, not vesicular at all. And diorite. See the difference? The grain sizes are very, very large. Coarse-grained, intrusive igneous rock. And if we looked at the composition of all of these, we'd be able to see that it has some plagioclase, feldspar, biotite, amphibole, and some samples might have some quartz in it, okay? And maybe even a tiny little bit of pyroxene, but none of them have olivine and none of them have potassium feldspar in it. Now, if we look again, we're starting up over here. We're gonna continue on our journey down. Basaltic glass, it's actually considered a glassy texture. It's non-vesicular, meaning it doesn't have gas pockets. Whereas scoria does, and you can see those gas pockets. Again, darker in color because we're in this side of the chart. So we have basaltic glass, and then we're going to have vesicular basalt next. And again, you can see the gas pockets, meaning it's extrusive. It cooled so incredibly quickly. All right? And the basaltic glass and scoria cooled quickly. That's why they have the texture that they have. Basalt is fine grained as well. Nice blue background on basalt, right? Kind of soothing. Um, and this is what the ocean floors are made of, which we'll talk about when we get to plate tectonics. Diabase. So you can see diabase rides that line between intrusive and extrusive, because it's a renegade. It's crazy like that. This one would be the extrusive sample. You can see it's very fine-grained, right? so it belongs to this category. And you'll see in the next slide that you see the, cor the grains are much coarser, and therefore this would be an example of intrusive diabase. Gabbro, again, look at how much larger the grain crystals are. Now we're into the intrusive section yet again. Again, we're on the darker side. These will be higher in density and mafic, rich in iron and magnesium. 
And that's the Gabbro close-up, everybody's favorite. Look how big those grains are. And now we're off on this side. Peridotite, kind of difficult to say. Cool thing about this, see the green in it? And look, look where it is. And we have pyroxene and olivine. And look at the color of olivine is green. Hey, I'm using green. Isn't that ooh, what a coincidence? That was not even planned, so I'm going to underline paradise in green to celebrate that fact. So here we are in this side where would be the darker rocks, the higher in density, and uh, mafic as well. And dunite as well, you could see a high percentage, if not all of it, all of it's olivine. Therefore, it's very green. Olivine is green. So, again, a pretty brilliant organization of information. Just to reiterate, not as brilliant as Penbrella because that's really the most brilliant thing in the world. I'm hoping that you enjoyed this and you can watch it at your leisure or leisure, as some people say. Um, it's a great way to learn the Scheme Figneous Rock Identification Chart in the Earth Science Reference Table, page 6. We will actually do... Um, labs with actual real samples of these rocks and not just pictures. So I know it's going to be tough to sleep, but do the best that you can. And I will see you in class. Have a great day. Bye.